Hello boys and girls. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to do a slightly quieter video today because my throat is fucked. What's happening guys is as the energy moves through my body and my chakra systems are changing. The throat chakra is what controls change and the acceptance of new behaviours and new beliefs. Where there is resistance to that change, you get an energy block. Scouse accent actually really hurts my throat. If you get an energy block in it, it can cause it can cause pain there. I also often associate this with um, you know, not not speaking truthfully, not not coming from a place of saying exactly what you want to say. And uh, unfortunately I had to do some politics last week. Um, not on the internet, at a local level in Malaysia, because it's a very political place this, and I had to do some politics and I had to do some things I didn't really want to do. For the greater good, as I saw it at the time, so my throat is very sore, so this video is going to be a bit croaky. It's going to be a bit, um, it's going to be a bit like um, that, the transsexual from Birkenhead. What's his name? Fuck it, it doesn't matter now. Lily Savage, I can't remember his real name. E.R. Love. <laughs> Lily fucking Savage. <coughs> so uh, this video, I, I felt motivated to do it because this is just coming up too many times now and it's going to be nice to do a video where I'm not dealing with gender issues and feeling like I'm fucking dancing over 10 laser beams just to make a point. Um, <laughs> this is this is absolutely nothing to do with gender, in fact I've seen this probably occur as much in women as, 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 as I have in male clients and it's something beyond depression. Um, Depression isn't really the right, right word for it, you know, depending on the psychiatrist's definition, what I'm about to say, some psychiatrists would say, no, no, that falls in with depression. It's something like depression that's combined with PTSD. So what I've seen in my own life and in other people's lives, um, as I've mentioned before on this channel, a lot of musicians are drawn to me. I don't know why, particularly singers, I don't know why. Um, it's always been like that, even on the Street Fight Secrets channel. I don't have a musical bone in my body, but I get a lot of musicians coming to me. Um, and people who work in the music industry. And one of the things that can happen is, if you're in a creative process, and you're successful in that creative process, let's say for the sake of objectivity it's karate, like you're an amazing karate practitioner, you win all the karate competitions and you're in all the karate magazines and you're very successful as a karate teacher. But then as a result of your success as a karate teacher, you attract a lot of jealousy and a lot of hate and a lot of people who you think are your friends are not your friends. And then imagine it goes worse than that as a result of you being a karate teacher and making all that money and having all that fame. People within your own family, people who you think love you and are there to support you, actually steal money from you. Now this could be metaphorical or this could be literal, the stealing of a resource, the stealing of time, the stealing of attention, or it could be actually stealing the symbolic energy representation, which is money. Imagine also that this lady who I'm describing, who's a karate champion, who's doing very, very well in karate and is a superstar, she also gets a man in her life and she thinks this man just loves her, loves her to pieces, and he convinces her that he does, but he's only there to feed off her fame as a karate champion and to feed off the money that she's making through her being an amazing karate instructor. And then one day, it all falls apart. She finds that the man has been cheating on her because he didn't really want to be with her, he didn't really want to be sleeping with her, he wanted to be sleeping with somebody else. He finds out, she finds out, sorry, let's make it, I'm, I'm, gender, I'm gender changing it because I'm so liberal and progressive like that. Um, and because, here's another weird synchronicity apart from what I'm describing here. Since somebody the other day asked me to talk about gays and transgender issues, I'm telling you that I, I've never seen so many transgender themes just turn up in my life from out of, from out of nowhere. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna discuss that on another, on another video. Weird synchronicity, beyond synchronicity. Um, and at first I rejected it, I thought, what the fuck do I know about people who are transgender? But actually you're talking about people who fundamentally um, are fighting with for their, their own self-image. And they're fighting with their own essential uh, sexual libidinous energy. And they're also fighting against cultural values. So actually it becomes much more relevant. And I've been shown 
um, not shown by the spirits. I mean, I've been shown through synchronicity, through these things coming up, but actually it is, it is much closer to home than I originally thought, but I digress. So your karate champion woman, she finds out that through karate she could make money, and through karate she could be famous, and through karate she could be successful, but then she also finds out that her husband doesn't really love her, her husband's just using her, and her dad is now, who was her uh, coach, like these tennis coach dads, these gymnastic coach dads who are pushing the girls to go out and do things. Turns out that daddy's been stealing money from her, for, for a lot of money, for a year or so. Right, so it wasn't like a one-off thing he did impulsively or, you know, it was a consistent pattern of behaviour over time. And she finds that her kindnesses and her good intentions and her loyalty have been rewarded with deceit and betrayal. I've told you before, and I'll tell you it again. Will you fucking listen to me, please? Your brain is not always your friend. Your brain can play tricks on you. You've got to be careful. So in that situation of the karate instructor where she's had so much success in teaching karate, but then she finds out that her husband isn't the man that she thought he was. Their father isn't the man that she thought he was. People aren't the people that she thought they were. People aren't it's intrinsically good. They're intrinsically opportunistic and it depends on their training or whatever else. And actually there is a lack of empathy out there. There is a lack of compassion out there. And the world is a a darker place than she previously thought. She'd be living in a bubble up until then. So everything falls out. You know, all of her, the karate instructors stab her in the back because they were never really her friends. They just uh, were waiting for the day when they could have the night of the long knives and stick the boots in. And uh, what happens is she goes underground for a year. She retreats into her cave. And we usually, that's, that's usually how people describe what men do, but women do women do it just as much as men do, they'll retreat into a cave. They go into a dark, small, confined space. This is what wounded animals do, where they can control the environment and they eat less and they sleep less and they do less. And this manifests as what we call depression. I'm not done yet, stick with me. Sorry about me whispery voice. Imagine now, four years later, we say, look, um, <clears throat> look, love, We'll call her Sally, the karate instructor. You know, we understand that you were heartbroken and, and that you fell out, not just with a person. You didn't get heartbroken just by one person, but you actually fell out with humanity. You actually became heartbroken with humanity itself. You actually became heartbroken with reality. You realised that everything that you'd worked for and everything that you'd built your entire life on was just a fucking thin tissue of lies. That's a bitter pill to swallow. And it's a big pill to swallow. And as it goes down, it will hurt your throat. And it will fuck with your chain chakras. Now I say to that woman, uh, uh, Sally the karate instructor, get back out and teach karate. Do you really fucking think she wants to do that? And here's where the brain plays tricks on you. The brain maps pain. The brain is obsessed with pain because it needs to be in order for us to survive. It's an evolutionary imperative. We need to map where the dragons are, we need to map where the tigers are, we need to map where the, I don't know, the, the poison berries are, whatever, right? Because if you don't, you'll die. So there is a high priority given to pain and avoidance. If Sally, <clears throat> at age 40, who was a fucking superstar instructor of karate at age 30, if you just turn around to her and say, go back and be a superstar of karate again, you know how to do it, you know how the business works, you know you can teach it, you know you're fucking good. Go and do it again. Do you think Sally's gonna go and rush to do that? No, Sally is not. And here's why. Because the brain forms simple neural connections. If making money in a music industry caused you pain before, caused you to experience heartache before, the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go and do it again. I look at the Dave Chappelle situation as an example outside of music, take it to stand-up comedy. We were talking about Oprah Winfrey yesterday, and there is that uh, famous interview of Oprah Winfrey with Dave Chappelle where she couldn't be more of a fucking twat, more of a fake therapist. I forgot to mention one of the things about the Oprah reality tunnel is people being fake therapists. Stop. I get messages from people all the time trying to give me therapy. I didn't fucking ask you for therapy. Am I sat here asking you for help? The only thing I need right now is a fucking strepsil. Can you get me one, please? <coughs> Fake therapy, it's a way of making yourself feel good and putting the other person in a slot and trying to, um, by the context, alter 
what you see as the power play of the relationship, but there is no power play here, guys. I'm giving you information for free. Quite honestly, I don't give a fuck whether you sign up for coaching. Couldn't give a fuck. Doesn't bother me. Don't think you know me like that, because you don't. Oh, this is a business enterprise. If I make some money off it, then fine. But I've got my own things going on. I really don't give a fuck. This is about much more than that. Much, much more than that. We'll get into that in another video. So Oprah Winfrey doing her fake therapy twat routine. You know, when did you realize that you turned crazy, Dave? And he's like, you know, don't use the word crazy. It's dismissive. In his situation, where he was a, becoming a multi-millionaire and he eventually became heartbroken and he started to have this fucking, you know, strong paranoid feeling that people were trying to destroy him and he spewed it all off. Dave Chappelle now has had this in, in, in my, he didn't ask me for this assessment, I'm just fucking giving it freely for the sake of it. He had this PTSD and depression combined phenomena by his creative energy being cut off so the creative energy is moving this way and then it's cut off and it's prime. And what then comes with it is, hey, I just wanted to fucking make people laugh. And whilst I made them laugh, maybe make them think. You know, Dave Chappelle's a very clever guy. He's a fantastic comedian. Uh, you know, like Patrice O'Neill. Um, I think what Patrice O'Neill was doing and what Dave Chappelle do, not to try and be overly grandiose, but I think that they're actually doing a lot of really good healing work. Um, which is dangerous, you know, if you make people laugh and you teach them at the same time, they'll usually assassinate you for that shit. I'm kidding. So, um, what was Dave Chappelle doing? Well, he was, he was doing his thing, he was being creative and then he got cut off. He got cut off as he was doing that and all money started to get in the way, people started backstabbing him. And he realised that he was, as Patrice would say, in the belly of the beast as far as Hollywood was going. People are waving millions in front of him. Millions. Keep these kids entertained. Anybody who can capture the fucking imaginations of, of college kids uh, in America will be given lots and lots of, lots and lots of money. Um, I wasn't into Dave Chappelle back, at, back then, by the way. My sister married in America, and they were both about the age of 24, and they kept on, whenever I'd see them, they would say, I'm Rick James, bitch. And I had no idea what that was, but that meme that meme, that idea, pe oh, now obviously I know what it is now, it's a very funny sketch. Um, and very subtly subversive sketch as well. Very fucking subtly subversive sketch. I wonder if he was pushed out. I wonder if there was a conspiracy to fucking stop him as well. Um, but right now, imagine you're Dave Chappelle. You're basically like Sally the Karate Instructor, aren't you? You've had a lot of success in your past by doing a certain thing and you were great at it but how is your brain not going to associate massive pain to doing that thing? What a horrible prison to be in. I know that I can do this. I know I can express myself creatively. I know I can help people. I know I can make money for myself. But I'm not going to let myself do it. And it's almost like a bloody stump where a hand used to be. And it's like, there's just pain there. There's just, there's just emptiness where that should be. And you end up trapped. The kind of work that needs to be done here, now I'm talking subliminally to a few people I've got in mind. One person was a very famous pop star in the 90s who experienced a lot of pain as a result of, of her fame. And I go around and look online and, and search her name on the forums and everybody's saying, where's the solo album, where's the solo album? And somebody says, oh, she was promising a solo album, but it never occurred. I have seen that so many times in therapy and I've seen it in myself. You're promising, you're promising, you're promising because your rational brain is going, of course I can do that, of course I can do that. But the unconscious stops you. And this is called an unconscious block. And the core of the work that I do with people fundamentally is about removing unconscious blocks. I only work with people's unconscious. When I'm doing coaching work with people, I want to get down into the unconscious template. And, you know, I, I put on a bit of a fucking attitude for the YouTube channel because it's YouTube, it's meant to be a spectacle. I'm more aggressive and more confrontational and more of a fucking wind up than I am in coaching, trust me. In coaching, I'm pretty fucking gentle because I'm walking inside of somebody else's reality and I don't want them to get spooked because I need as much information as I can gather. One of the things that I do that I see as being different to other therapists is I don't assume I know what my client's problem is and I don't assume the client knows what the problem is. So if I say to the client, what's your problem? Whatever sentence they come out with, I assume is going to be a defense mechanism to get me to fuck off.
because they're in pain. They're in their cave. What's your problem, mate? I've got insomnia. I've got insomnia. I suffer from depression. Go away. <laughs> whatever, you're buy whatever you're selling, we're not buying today, and then the door gets slammed in your face. So I always assume that they don't know. I assume that I don't know, and you've got to gather information, gather information, take them towards the problem. They start to get spooked, their emotional state changes, then you've got to tell them a joke, you've got to make them laugh and guide them over here and talk about something weird and crazy that breaks the state. Then we go back to the problem, we've got to get back into it. Because I need to get under it, behind it, I need to see the whole fucking thing so that I can deconstruct it. That's how it works. So in the case of Dave Chappelle, what would need to be done there is that he would need to be convinced through therapy. I'm not saying that, I'm not presuming to be his therapist. I'm saying based on what I can see. Okay, take this as a... Um, like a, a the, let this be a myth. Let this not be. Let, I'm not talking about the literal, actual person, Dave Chappelle, because I don't fucking know him. But let's use him as an example. So let's take this mythologically, because it suits a purpose to deliver a lesson, a teaching, if you like, that you can use yourself. If you've ever experienced wanting to move towards something, knowing that it would be good for you, knowing that you know how to do it, but you still fucking don't do it, it's not because you're lazy. It's not because you're procrastinating. People keep saying, oh, I procrastinate. Why? I'm lazy. No, you're not. It's, it's, not, it's not the natural state of a human being to want something, to want to walk over there, to know exactly how to get over there and then not do it. Something's being cut off. Something's being mutilated. What causes mutilation and cutting off? Violence. Now, it might not be a physical violence. It could be. You might have been punched up. Like, if I take you to a room and um, I release a certain fragrance, uh, say sandalwood incense, and then I beat the fuck out of you whilst playing the girl from Ipanema in the background. Every time you hear the girl from Ipanema or smell that sandalwood incense, you're gonna get freaked out because I beat the fuck out of you whilst you were listening to that music and whilst you smelled that incense. I'm making a, a comic book horror style image in your mind so that you can really understand what this is. In terms of your success, in terms of relationships, people have said to me, why can't I move forward in relationships? Because you want to, but you don't want to. You want to move forward, but you don't want to be vulnerable. You know where you want to be. You want to be in love. You want to be happy. You want to be peaceful. But at the same time, your unconscious isn't going to allow that. Now, why? I'm spinning through a lot of fucking subjects here. That Every single one of these subjects I could talk for an hour about. But I just want to give it to you condensed. And still try and make it fast enough that it can be interesting and entertaining as well. Um, is your unconscious has a primary drive towards safety. The key word here is safety. So I would say to Dave Chappelle, if he was my client, well, I don't know what I would say exactly, but my prime objective would be to make him feel, feel, the key word here is feel safe, making money again, getting out there and doing his thing again. And his unconscious is saying, no, 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 danger, danger, danger. You know, fucking sirens are going off inside of his head, inside of the client's head. And you've got to convince them, no, it's okay. It's different this time. You learned your lessons from the past. How do you convince them of that? Well, then we need to go and literally say, what did you learn when you were famous and you were successful? Sally, karate instructor Sally, what did you learn last time that you wouldn't do again? What would you never do again? What top five things would you never do again that keep you safe? What top five things would you always do as new rules, as new boundaries for you to assert that would keep you safe? My throat seized up. La 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 la. <laughs> in Malaysia, they say la at the end of words and in Singapore, they do the same thing. Uh, what do you want to do la? But I must, being from where I'm from, we say la as well, but we say it differently. We say, do you know what I mean, like, in a different way. So they keep telling me off here. They're going, oh, you try to sound Malaysian, but you're doing it wrong. I'm like, no, you're trying to sound Scouse, but you're doing it wrong. Anyway, <laughs> it's called a pattern interrupt. It's to break state. It's to keep your mind fresh. <laughs> I learned it from Eddie Izzard. Uh, anyway, 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 don't think about transvestites with, uh, called Eddie Izzard right now. Don't think about him. Don't think about him. So you have an unconscious block. Your mind wants to move in a direction, but you're moving in another direction. You've got to make yourself feel safe doing the thing that you want to do again. Will it ever be the same? I don't think so. I think that's the sad thing. Like the lady, there's, there's two ladies. Well, one lady used to work in the music industry as a journalist and she got 
very famous very quickly because she's a bright girl. But through that, she ended up having this episode of a scene in an office where her boss was shouting at her in front of other people, you're a fucking slut. So her brain is associating um, success in the music industry as a journalist as a, to the a, a very unpleasant, adrenalized, traumatic experience of you're a fucking slut. And so doesn't want to go back there. So there is a, there's this impulse to come out of the cave to pop the head above the parapet. Then the inner animal is going, no, 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 it's dangerous out there. It's dangerous out there. And the only way to overcome that is to overcome the unconscious blocks. It's a big topic, over, overcoming unconscious blocks. I've given you a couple of clues there how to do it. Really, the, the best tool that I've seen for it, for it is something called parts therapy, where you talk to the individual parts. You say, uh, in Dave Chappelle's case, right, we've got Mr. Stand-Up Comic, wants to make the world happy, wants to teach people things, wants to make people laugh. But then inside of his brain, he's got Mr. Bodyguard. And you can actually see in interviews, if you look at him in inside the actor's studio, you'll see him go into these different states, these different people. These are social constructs, they're not real. He's not possessed and he's not a multiple personality having schizophrenic. But I've seen him uh, in inside the actor's studio slip from confident, warm, creative guy, I got loads of jokes, let me make you laugh, let me do my fucking job, uh, into scared, angry, stiff, aggressive, guy, Mr. Bodyguard. So you've got Mr. Stand-Up Comic and Mr. Bodyguard. Mr. Stand-Up Comic and Mr. Bodyguard. It's an it's a interesting thing for me to watch because uh, I, I used to work as a, as a nightclub doorman, as a security guard, as a bouncer for comics. That was my first job. Was I used to work as, I'm not making this up to make a point, that was my first job working security like 15 years ago. I was a young uh, nightclub doorman. was a, in a stand-up comedy club in Liverpool. I looked after Eddie Azard one night. I was very proud. Lovely man. Lovely, lovely man. Uh, so yeah, this, this kind of thing goes on. The other lady I'm thinking of, who was very, very famous, but then didn't go back to it, and people are saying, why, why, why? She's got a great voice, she's got this great skill, she's a great producer, why not do it? And I'm thinking, you don't understand what it's like when you've had your fingers burned, when you've been cut off doing something that you love, they actually convince you to hate what you love and it's really fucked up and it puts you in a state of depression with post-traumatic stress disorder. There will be another way of describing this that will be better but I don't know what it is yet. It's not just depression, it's, de it's depression that is caused by a feeling of having been hurt. Hey, and you know, you don't have to be a fucking creative or a martial artist or an artist or a musician to experience this. Uh, you might have experienced this at work. I used to be really good at I don't know, like being a gra a lot, I speak to a lot of graphics designers as well. I used to be awesome as a graphics designer, but now because I got fired from my last job and it was traumatic, I don't even want to, I used to love doing artwork. I used to love designing graphics for the sake of it because I loved it. Now I can't do it anymore. I sit down to do it and I just go, I can't be asked, and then I feel guilty. And then I start telling myself, myself off inside my own head, moralizing, saying you're lazy, you're weak, you're stupid, you're fucking, you're a loser. And so the joyous cycle continues. Okay, darlings. <clears throat> Thank you very much for your time and your attention. Uh, one of the things I'm going to remind people to do in all of these videos now is uh, try and keep it. Try and keep your emotional state light. A lot of these topics are quite heavy, and I don't want to accidentally upset people or trigger depression or sadness in people. I'm nothing but optimism. Nothing but hope. Uh, really, truly, that the things can improve. Uh, it just takes work and it takes skill and it takes knowledge. We might have to forego certain things, we might have to sacrifice certain things, but I am very, very hopeful about moving into the future that whatever it is you've experienced, you know, you're not dead. You're still here. You can still smile. Therefore, you'll probably make it. You can, you can uh, get past it. But not dragging around the experiences of our past uh, is, a, is a challenge. Right, well, I think I'll leave it there for that one. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Please, please press the like button and feed my narcissistic supply and uh, leave a comment if you feel like it as well. Right, thank you very much and I will speak to you soon.